uh, dear students, dear colleagues, uh, dear guests, let me welcome you at uh, the panel on uh, the Hungarian local election. My name is Zsolt Enyedi, I'm from Rector for Hungarian Affairs, but I'm here more in capacity of a political scientist. I would like to um, briefly describe the, uh, the topics of uh, the panel today. Um, the event that triggered is obviously the uh, local elections on uh, thir uh, 13th of October. So we will uh, mainly discuss the um, causes and uh, consequences of uh, these local elections and we will discuss to some extent uh, the magnitude of change uh, that we witnessed. We have two eminent uh, election experts who will uh, uh, do this. One is Robert Laszlo from the uh, political uh, capital think tank. The other one is Gabor Toka, professor of political science here at CEU. And after they gave their presentation that will uh, reveal a number of uh, new uh, data that um, will give a more precise uh, picture of what happened, we will try to put these election results into context. We thought that the proper context is to look at Turkey and Poland. Uh, obviously, there are big differences between these uh, three countries, but um, uh, these are countries where um, the state um, takes part or takes sides in the electoral process. So in that sense, uh, they are somewhat pe peculiar countries. And in spite of the fact that um, there is no level playing field, in spite of the fact that there are issues with the checks and balances, the opposition has managed to win electoral uh, contests in both Turkey and in Poland at the local level. So there are a large number of mayors, especially of large cities, that belong to the opposition, even the capital city. And therefore, one of the questions that we will be asking our experts is to inform us whether this makes a difference. That is, um, whether the fact that um, uh, elections at, lo at local level are won by the opposition uh, candidates should make us think differently about the quality of democracy in these regimes and whether uh, this has a consequence for the uh, national uh, contest. So um, we will have, uh, therefore, two presentations that will reflect to some extent on the Hungarian local election, but also will tell uh, the separate story. And Marina Voronciuk will uh, present the uh, Turkish case. She is a researcher here at the um, Center for European Neighborhood Studies at CEU. And then we will have uh, Wojciech Sadurski, who is professor at University of Sydney and University of Warsaw, who will receive a much more proper introduction later on today at half past five, because he will give a lecture in the presidential lecture uh, series. So all of you are invited to that event as well. But the uh, bottom line is that he knows inside out uh, uh, Poland and um, he knows the nature of the uh, regime uh, very well indeed, even at a very personal uh, level, if I may say so. So uh, this is what we plan. Uh, the first presentations will be uh, presenting uh, uh, actual data. And therefore, um, without further ado, I will ask uh, Robert to start the presentation. Can I find the presentation itself? I guess this one is that, yeah. Doesn't work. No. Now it's okay. Okay. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, I was asked to summarize the uh, the results of the uh, elections in 15 minutes, which is of course impossible. So. Uh, I try to focus on a, on a few components uh, of the outcomes. Uh, my case statement is that Fidesz not really weakened in, in these uh, elections, uh, however the opposition strengthened uh, at least a little bit. Uh, let's focus on a few data to, to, uh, to see wh why I mentioned this. I'm not sure you, you can see the data, can you? You, you can, great. Uh, 
So in the first column, you can see the 2014 uh, municipal election results in the county list. And uh, following that, there are coming the 2019 European parliamentary elections, and then the 2009 municipal ones. The, the, this one is the freshest data. And then on the last column, uh, uh, you can see the municipal ele elections minus the EP elections. So you can see the difference between the two. But first of all, I have to emphasize uh, what is new in these data is that uh, on the, in the column of the 2009 EP elections, you don't see the data you are familiar with from May 26, because um, uh, as you may know that during the municipal elections, those voters do not vote for party lists who are living in the 23 biggest towns in, uh, with county rights. So from, so from Chopron to Bekeshchaba, these 23 cities are, don't vote these to, to this party list. So this is why, in order to make it comparable, uh, there is a difference between the, the real 2019 uh, European Parliament with data and this one. Uh, so the, this is the reduced uh, amount uh, of, of votes. I'm not sure uh, it's clear uh, what I try to explain, but yeah. Okay, <laughs> based on your reactions, it's clear. Okay, so this is why uh, the, the data of, uh, in this column is higher because um, uh, Fidesz is uh, much more uh, supported in the smaller settlements than in the bigger ones. So, uh, and uh, what you can see is that the uh, darker lines show where Fidesz could strengthen based on the percentage of votes. Of course, the, the turnout is a little bit different, but not so much. So uh, it's, wor it's worth to see that uh, which are the counties where Fidesz uh, became even stronger in October than they were in May. Since Boranya, Borsodabo, example, and Feyer, Heves, Komar, Mestergom, and Feyer and Pest are almost the same, uh, ju uh, just like a, f a few months uh, before. So, and and the other thing I have to explain is the bolded data shows the significant change in, in the numbers. So the significant changes only happens in Borsodabo, for example, where almost 5% uh, more went to Fidesz now than four months ago. In Heves, where more than 6%, Komar Mestergom, where more than 5%, and Shomoj, when 4% less. Uh, than a few months ago, but this happened just because of the fact that there is a, uh, a civil organization called Shomogert, uh, uh, who are pretty uh, supported only during the municipal elections. Maybe a few Fidesz voters voted for them as well. Uh, all other changes are not really significant, so we can see that the main support stayed uh, for Fidesz, and, and uh, where, where there is a significant change, uh, uh, they, they even strengthened. So this is what we can see from the um, county, uh, county list, the smaller settlements of Hungary. Uh, I'm sure you all know the outcome of the Budapest elections and the opposition uh, can feel that they triumphed uh, Fidesz in, in the capital and actually this is what happened. Now they have the Lord Mayor and out of the 23 Budapest districts, they occupied uh, 14. Previously they had five or six uh, uh, ba based on your understanding whether the 23rd district was an oppositional-led uh, uh, district or not. Okay, now it seems very good. Uh, out of the 23, they have 14, but what was the situation back in 2018 uh, on, the, uh, on the parliamentary elections when, uh, the, when the opposition parties and all supporters felt that they are defeated and Orban, Victor, uh, Victor Orban and Fidesz triumphed. Actually, in the uh, 2018 parliamentary elections, we have 18 districts uh, in, in Budapest, and out of this 18, 12 went to the oppositional parties, and they, were, and they weren't happy at all. Why not? Because Fidesz did, uh, still had the two-thirds majority, and it didn't really matter. However, in Budapest, they, they had the majority back then. I just show you the six uh, single member constituencies where the opposition parties could not win uh, back in two, 2018. And you can see uh, the number of votes, this is the n number of votes, uh, and you can see that how fragmented the oppositional parties were in these uh, municipalities. 
uh, and if you add up uh, the MSPP uh, or DECA or EDUT votes just with LMP, out of this six, at least five would go to the opposition as well. And I didn't talk about your big, didn't talk about momentum, and I didn't talk about uh, the two-third dog party, the MKK, MKKP. Uh, so out of the six could have gone to, uh, uh, to the opposition in case uh, only LMP cooperated with MSPP, DECA, and, uh, and, and EDUT. Of course, I know you cannot automatically uh, sum, sum up this uh, uh, data, uh, but if you, if you add up momentum and, M and MKKP as well, you can see on the last column that, that uh, all of the single member constituencies could have been won uh, uh, by the opposition back in 2018. So this is what changed from then to now, that the opposition um, had only one uh, serious candidate uh, against the, uh, the, uh, the Fidesz mayoral candidate, and this is why they could make it, but only in 14 places out of the 23. So I risk a statement that their summarized um, outcome is not better uh, than, it, than, it, than it was uh, in 2018, but the stakes are different, the candidates are different, of course, uh, but, uh, but the whole condition, the whole support for the opposition didn't really get better uh, in Budapest. However, it was high enough back in 2018 as well. I just show you the few ones, the change in number of votes for defeated Fidesz mayors in Budapest. So only those mayors are here, those districts uh, which were led by uh, Fidesz mayor uh, until last week. And, uh, and the ones who were defeated uh, by, the, uh, by the oppositional candidate. And in the last column, you can see the difference within the number of votes um, uh, compared to 2014. So this is something that can be, that can be compared. And you can see that in most, pa most places, Fidesz managed to have even more votes than they got five years ago. Again, what's the difference? The more, uh, uh, the more effective cooperation between the, between the oppositional parties. Only the first district, Nagy Gábor Tamás, uh, gained 10 less votes, 19 less to in the fourth, di fourth district, and 277 less in the sixth. But all other places, the Fidesz candidate gained even more uh, than, than five years ago. So. Uh, you shouldn't think that uh, the Fidesz voter uh, turned their backs uh, to Fidesz or the mobilization uh, uh, capacity uh, worsened in, in the last five years. This is certainly what not happened. But you can say that, okay, this is Budapest, but we, we have 10 major towns uh, which was uh, won by the oppositional candidate now. Let's see what happened there by the same logic change in number of votes for defeated Fidesz mayors in cities with county rights. Um, this is only the, those seven cities where there was an incumbent uh, Fidesz mayor. The, these are the only, uh, only seven I, I show you now. And the situ situation is the same. You can see it here. I'm not sure if you can see my cursor. Can you? No. Okay, so the, in, the, in the last column, you can see that all data is positive, which means in all seven uh, towns where Fidesz mayor was defeated, they gained even more votes uh, than five years ago. Okay, it can be the difference between the, uh, between the um, turnout data as well. So I show you not just the change in number of votes, but the change in proportion of votes for defeated Fidesz mayor. Same place. So now there is a difference. There are a few places when concerning the, uh, the, the percentage points. Uh, Dunaui Város, Erd, Miskolc, and Tatabánya are significantly lower than it was uh, five years ago. But even in Eger and uh, Pécs and Szombathely, concerning the proportion of votes, they got even more. So again, what, what, what is the difference between the two situations? Fidesz still has their voter base even a little bit more massive than it was five years ago. Um, uh, but the cooperation between the, uh, among the oppositional parties were much more effective. So th th this is what these data shows. 
just a few findings uh, co uh, concerning base based on these data. FIDA still has its strongholds. Uh, this is what I just emph emphasized. Opposition co uh, cooperation worked, and of course, there was a video with the Dior mayor. Uh, everybody's familiar with that. Uh, nobody really knows how much, uh, how much uh, it was. I'm pretty sure that it mobilized the oppositional voters partly, uh, uh, but we, we will never know uh, what would happen in case we, we, uh, this video would never leaked out. Um, but what we know is um, uh, that uh, we, we just published um, a chart uh, about the Google search keywords from the last week of the election campaign, and Borkai were on top. We, you couldn't find any kind of uh, wor uh, words that, uh, was, that were searched more uh, than, than, the, than the word Borkai, not even, I don't know, Facebook, sex, porn, God, politics, Erdogan, nothing. In Hungary, Borkai went on top in the, in the, last, in the, in the last seven days of, of the campaign. So it certainly worked and, and influenced and mo mobilized the voters, but we will never qu uh, quantify this. What we know is that the Fidesz voters were uh, uh, fewer in, in Igyur than five years ago. Parad uh, uh, paradoxically, he still could win, but not with a 65%, but with a 44%, which is a huge difference. Budapest and 10 more cities cannot be punished by the government. Uh, I think this is the, uh, uh, the most rele relevant change uh, now, because um, in the upcoming years, uh, uh, Fidesz cannot behave than, than, than they did in the last few years. Budapest was the guilty city, maybe Szeged and Salgotarján, and in the last uh, one and a half year, Hódmezővásárhely was the first, fourth place where that they could punish, uh, but, uh, but not Budapest and 10 more cities, which is almost half of the country. So uh, Viktor Orban mentioned that he, he wants to cooperate with all, all mayors. He just said it in the parliament a few minutes ago. Um, I'm pretty sure that, um, that the military rhetoric and military politics will not change in the, in the midterm. Uh, however, they can't punish uh, the, the half of the country, so the opposition have their room for maneuvering based on these bastions they, they just occupied. So this is, this is what they got the chance to, to rebuild themselves, and they certainly have lessons to learn, but no opposition cooperation recipe fund for parliamentary elections. This is not the way it works that now uh, we know that the cooperation is perfect and we, we just need uh, a joint list on the parliament for elections as well. I guess this is not that simple, but we are just writing a, a, a longer study on that which will be published next week. So we will come back to this issue at least uh, at the latest on next Wednesday. Thank you very much and I'm looking forward to your questions. to have the Gabor Q first. at okay. the end of the okay. uh, panel. So in the meantime, please think about the questions that uh, you would want to pose. And we will continue to some extent with the issue of coordination, I, I assume. Or something else. Uh, if I, F5 didn't make the trick, so then. And then maybe this one will put it in. Okay, uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming to this panel. Uh, what I'd like to talk about are the two competing interpretations of uh, the election outcome that uh, Ruby already mentioned. Uh, one obviously talks about uh, a breakthrough for the opposition and the other that really not that much changed. Uh, I think there are a couple of uh, views uh, about Hungarian elections that we need to revise and update on the basis of the results, whether the changes that we saw are big or small, I leave uh, uh, for you to judge. Uh, I will just try to make uh, the inferences a little more nuanced and uh, uh, accurate than, than usually they are in the, in the commentaries. And also, I, I don't think that you came here to hear that you know, only time will tell, so I will try to say something with confidence about what to, what to expect. Uh, as, as Robbie explained, I mean, one thing that we saw is that Hungarian elections are probably more competitive from now on than, uh, than we thought that they are going to be. Um, 
uh, because he described the results uh, uh, in, in some details. I, I, I can skip this part. Maybe what, I, what we should add is, of course, that another aspect of competitiveness of in elections, which is how free and fair elections are, that didn't change much, and certainly not for the better this time around. Uh, uh, in the Electoral Integrity Project, which is a global kind of survey of uh, how free and fair multi-party elections are around the globe, uh, rates Hungary as of now uh, exactly halfway between Finland on top of the range and uh, Venezuela at the rock bottom. Uh, uh, so that's how it was. Okay, I'm going to skip this. This is a little lecture on how to read between the lines in government propaganda and, and to show that they also say the same thing, what I'm going to say, but... Uh, in, in their kind of different ways. Um, now, but moving uh, forward, so your best English language source on, on how polls are in Hungary is a Wikipedia page, which is not entire systematic and uh, comprehensive, but nevertheless, uh, you can find there enough uh, data to see that uh, after the last parliamentary election, Fidesz edged up a little bit in the uh, uh, polls, have a few percentage points, and this year they pretty much maintained that level. Uh, just about, uh, just over 50% uh, uh, of the thing. This was obviously confirmed by both the European Parliament election results as well as the local election results. Uh, probably in national elections, they wouldn't have this share of the vote because there would be a higher turnout, so more of the uh, sort of uh, weakly committed opposition voters uh, show up in national elections, but, but they would probably do better than in terms of uh, a vote share than they did in the last parliamentary election. Uh, uh, in this chart, uh, what you see on the horizontal axis are the local election results, I mean the Fidesz vote share in local elections by municipality, the little colorful things are the municipalities, 3,000 something. Municipalities and the vertical axis shows the European Parliament election results. The white uh, 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 line uh, on the diagonal uh, uh, is, is where you know, they are equal, in the vote share, so you see the municipalities are lining up nicely on the two sides of the line. Uh, there are about as many uh, below and above. Above, you see the municipalities where Fidesz did worse in the municipal elections than in the European Parliament elections, and below the line, you see those which, where the opposite happened. And uh, as you can see, pretty much independently of how uh, well Fidesz did in the uh, uh, European election, they, they did more or less the same in, in the local election as well, except for what you see in this, this uh, sort of left uh, 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 end of the distribution where uh, the there are a couple of bigger uh, uh, circles which stand for more populous municipalities than these small uh, dots. And, uh, and those are uh, above the line or well above the line. So those are the places where Fidesz didn't do very well uh, uh, in the European election already. Uh, the opposition concentrated their coordination efforts and campaign efforts there in uh, the single member districts races of the local election. And uh, as you can see, where, where they worked, they, they, got, uh, 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 they did a considerable damage to the Fidesz vote, sometimes very big damage to the Fidesz vote. So that's what uh, uh, the first, uh, sorry, uh, that's the first change, that the momentum sort of shifts. Until, uh, since the 2018 election, the momentum was firmly on the Fidesz side. They were coming up in the polls. They looked very strong. Opposition uh, just looked ha very helpless and uh, lacked credibility. This time, uh, this election somehow restored a little bit of the opposition credibility as a potent electoral force, and uh, they at least show that if they, you know, they really start working in, on campaigns and, and uh, uh, rally behind single candidates, then they can do better than uh, uh, general. Another thing that they learned, I think, on the opposition side is that uh, they don't have to be so shy about their policy and uh, value commitments. I mean. In the past few years, they, uh, the opposition wasn't particularly outspoken about policy and values because they uh, often felt that, that uh, this socially conservative, anti-immigrant, uh, uh, ethnos uh, 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 ethnocentric, uh, 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 often authoritarian uh, positions, law and order kind of stance of Fidesz is popular with the most of the electorate, so you better not talk about those issues and uh, uh, try to do something else, talk about just corruption and democracy and stuff like that. But in this election, uh, to some extent, they discovered uh, something else. Uh, in District 8, which is a particularly troublesome district uh, for all sorts of uh, social uh, problems uh, uh, in Budapest, Fidesz seemed unbeatable for the last 10 years. They were running very strong on a law and order platform in the district. Uh, the, uh, the two councillors on the top uh, left and uh, bottom right of this uh, slide uh, uh, were members of the Fidesz faction. The, the man uh, was the, uh, is still the head of the Neighborhood Watch organization there, while the woman was running an extremely 
in a successful uh, um, sort of grassroots campaign a couple of years ago against the syringe exchange program for drug addicts in the district, which uh, the sort of social liberal NGOs were running there and were unpopular with, uh, was unpopular with uh, most residents. On the waves of that campaign, she became a Fidesz councillor. This time, they were defeated by the two men on, uh, who you saw on their two sides, two candidates of color, young men, who were extremely outspoken about their sort of social liberal uh, platform, you know, they don't look like the, you know, experienced uh, consumer, uh, uh, local politician of, of their day. And, and with a door-to-door -door canvassing campaign and with being very explicit what they stand for on drugs, on, 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 um, on nationalism and, and all the rest of it, they beat it, these two candidates who are sort of emblematic figures of the law and order platform of the uh, Fidesz, which seems so unbeatable in this thing. So the result is that uh, the opposition will probably think now that, that uh, you know, maybe maybe it's not unbeatable to uh, uh, this this Fidesz platform, and maybe you can even gain something by by uh, challenging that. Whether that will help them in the next election or hurt them, that uh, I, I really don't know. So on that, I remain silent. But it's going to be a change, I think, in the coming years in what the opposition is doing. Another uh, notable change is, is uh, happened in the resource distribution in this election. Of course, Fidesz is still having an enormous advantage in terms of money, organization, media access, uh, 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 public opinion polling operations, and all the rest of it. Uh, they have nicely organized stages, extremely precisely planned campaign with events. Uh, tens of thousands of people going to, you know, the inauguration of all sorts of uh, institutions and roads and whatnot across the country. Uh, 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 a victory parade uh, uh, on election night with loads of flags in the background, as you can see on the picture. And yet, you see the sour faces at the victory parade, right? And you see, now you have to go into criminology, you see a conspicuously absent face from the picture. So, who is Trotsky? Can you spot who is missing? Uh, the propaganda minister is missing. We haven't seen the propaganda minister since election day. Uh, and we have seen at least once uh, Mr. Borkoy himself. So, you know, the program missionaries e went missing even more than Mr. Borkoy since the election. So they are not very happy with him. And the reason, I think, is this. Uh, 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 w this is a factory fence where someone scribbled, give us cocaine, not potatoes, uh, 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 which is mocking, on the one hand, the vote-buying efforts of the Fidesz organizations across the country, and on the other hand, there's a reference with the cocaine word uh, to the Borja scandal. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, it's, we don't know whether this is a campaign worker who did this or, or, or it's just a citizen, but it's someone doing, putting in voluntary work spontaneously with imagination and uh, with some you know, daring uh, and, and provocation in the thing, and this thing appears to work, and it's sort of, so the, the more imagination, more creativeness, more ingenuity, more uh, enthusiasm and commitment on the side of the people who put in voluntary free labor in the uh, otherwise extremely resourceless uh, and poorly funded opposition efforts can somehow counterbalance, I mean, the uh, Leviathan. Uh, and that is, that is, I think, a big lesson for both the propaganda minister and for the uh, Fidesz people, uh, which, to which they will have to design a response to, and surely they will. Now, uh, have we not been here before? In 2012, 2015, obviously, uh, the opposition had some hopes uh, that they may do better next time around. Now, in 2019, is it not the case that, well, uh, next uh, parliamentary election come, Fidesz will again have a two-thirds majority because after all they have the resources and they are you know, not stupid, they can design a response, they have all the means to do well. Uh, while I think there are a couple of new things, um, I don't dismiss the chances of, of them, of course, winning another two-thirds majority, but there are a couple of new things. First is that, uh, that the opposition uh, had uh, some success with this um, united opposition platform means that Next time around, at least in the one election uh, uh, that is coming up next, uh, they will have some credibility that they can, they can have success with this thing. And therefore, whatever new uh, organizations, initiatives we come up on the opposition side with the promise of you know, changing the opposition so that it becomes a more effective opposition, blah, 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 will have less traction with the electorate now than they used to have in 2018, or even in this election in the shape of... Uh, Mr. Pujer, candidate for uh, uh, Mudapest mayor, or in previous times, the two-tailed dog party. I think this kind of 
sort of uh, splinters from the opposition will not gather quite as much uh, attention and support uh, next time than they did so far. Second is that uh, what we have to see is that this, what happened is not part of a midterm blues. Uh, in 2012 and 2015, Fidesz uh, was down in the polls because uh, the economic climate wasn't particularly good, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, so they had some some popularity difficulties. Now this is not the case. It is just the oppos uh, opposition pulled out something uh, which which worked better, and the midterm blues is coming after this. We haven't yet seen it, and and we know for certain that it's coming because because the, because you know because of the three elections in a row, national, uh, European, and par uh, and local. The monetary and fiscal policies of the government were really geared towards maintaining a, a, a climate of economic uh, optimism uh, for the last uh, uh, two, three years, and 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 uh, and and it's not going to work any longer because they have to introduce austerity. I mean, maybe not major austerity, but uh, bits of it, and they promised that already uh, between the lines, and it's going to happen because because they have to do that if they want to be in a good shape uh, uh, by the time of the next election again. Uh, uh, the, uh, what, what you can see very clearly as evidence, so to be empirical, is that the, as of 2016, the Hungarian state budget was one of the tightest across Europe. Uh, by now, it's one of uh, uh, the highest deficits in the European Union, what the Hungarian government is running. So unlike uh, other European governments, they could, did prepare much less to weather the widely anticipated uh, economic downturn in Europe in the coming months and, uh, and years, and they, as a result of that, they will be hit harder. And this is a, a, a something that we know. We also know that uh, government uh, party popularity tracked very nicely. Consumer optimism in Hungary for the last um, at least the 10 years, but uh, uh, more like the last 25 years, uh, so th that ha will have some consequences for their popularity. Now, because, because they delayed uh, 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 the, the midterm blues with their monetary and their fiscal policies in the last one and a half year because of these elections coming up. Uh, therefore, they probably have less time to turn things around uh, before the next election than before. Third difference is that now there is a visible momentum. In 2012 and 2015, the, the, the momentum for the, op the opposition was not terribly visible. It was only in the public opinion polls. In 2015, it was even in the polls, you could only see it if you were particularly experienced in how to read Hungarian public opinion polls. Now it was in an election result. It was in, in the face of everyone. Uh, 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 in every village, you will learn uh, eventually that you know, Page, Miskolc, Budapest were taken by the opposition. So that is a change. It will also be heard outside of the country. If until now, European politicians were sometimes wary of taking on the Orban government because they thought that you know, they could just be read a backlash as it did in early 2000. Uh, 12, 13, when the Orban government could mobilize their supporters against uh, pressure from the European Commission. Uh, now, well, probably they will uh, have a different calculus about that. Okay, I skipped the next point because uh, 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 we are running out of time. Uh, uh, I come back to this sort of amalgamation of the opposition and what uh, 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 Robbie mentioned about this, not so much what is the formula, but, but what is that is happening in spite of the formula is not being there. And in terms of uh, increased cohesion and unity of the opposition and, uh, and, and, and some elements of a, a, a shared programmatic appeal appearing on the opposition side. So just quickly, so what do you expect next? Like I said, uh, I think it's widely expected now, both by the government side and the, on the opposition side, that uh, the next parliamentary election will be fought as a two-block uh, competition, one way or another. Uh, because so many people believe that these uh, 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 sex videos worked nicely. In this election, there will be more of that. So that, that you can also expect uh, with certainty that uh, more of the Borkai video type uh, will come in the couple, next couple of years, so politicians better take care of their zips in the coming years. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, the opposition will have some gains in terms of the three M's of, of George Gallup, that is media, money, and uh, morale because of the success, they will boost their media access, they will probably create some new media themselves with the, using the municipal positions. They will get more donations and they will get more volunteers and, uh, and that will help them. I think just the fact that they had some success in the local election will increase their credibility as a potent electoral force and that in alone will lead to a little bit of a gain uh, 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 in the polls uh, already in the coming months. So you can check me whether I'm right or not. 
Like I said, there will be a wave of fiscal discipline uh, on the negative side for the government, but of course there will be a government response. Uh, 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 one uh, very important element of the response will be a redistricting of parliamentary constituencies next year. A uh, law requires that by the end of next year, the uh, districts in, in County Pest are redrawn, DDS irrelevant. Um, I would bet that this uh, mandate given by law will be interpreted uh, as, as a mandate to redraw all the constituency boundaries across the country and uh, we will have a completely new election map uh, for the election which will take account of what is the expected geographic distribution of Fidesz and, and its challenger, the united opposition in, in the next election. That will give a nice cushion for, for Fidesz, so the opposition, if they get their gerrymander as right as they did in 2011, then uh, they will give them, uh, so that will mean that the opposition will have to win like 10% more of the vote to have as many seats, single district seats as Fidesz. Uh, uh, so that, you know, raises the bar for the opposition quite a bit. I mean, so that may be a big ask. Then uh, there will be all sorts of other means of, of building, let's call it just elect, uh, extrajudicial electoral advantage. Uh, 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 and, and, and then certainly there will be some experimentation with more programmatic, new programmatic appeals, um, and, and that will be tested with a national constitutional referendum in the next uh, uh, two years, I imagine. Maybe that we, have, we will have both. Uh, um, the topic, I guess it's undecided from, from what they planned for, the, for a constitutional, for, for constitutional amendments, and from what happened in neighboring countries in the last couple of years. There were lots of uh, anti-gay right referenda initiatives, uh, referendum initiatives in the neighboring countries, and I, I think that they looked at that as, as a possibility, as whether they will pick that or something else that I cannot tell. But So what we can expect is, is, uh, is not that the opposition will carry the day in the next election, but, uh, but it will be an even more intensely fought affair than the previous one. Marina to uh, give her presentation, maybe, yeah, yeah. Of course, Turkey is in the news today for different reasons uh, than the local elections, but maybe there is some connection between the two. Uh, good afternoon. I was asked to make a very interesting intellectual exercise of trying to draw parallels between uh, Hungarian and Turkish uh, local elections, uh, given uh, the presumed similarities between the political dynamics in both countries. Uh, so, um, and actually, the newly elected uh, Budapest mayor was himself referring to this Istanbul effect. So, it was this notion was very much heard here in Hungary. He traveled himself to Istanbul and uh, talking to the new elected. Istanbul mayor trying to kind of you know borrow the successful electoral tactics of, of the uh, opposition candidate. Uh, Turkey uh, hold the elections in March this year and uh, in Istanbul they were cancelled, the results of the elections were cancelled when the opposition uh, candidate uh, won the elections by a very slim margin, 0.17%. Uh, so uh, the Erdogan government said basically that this result became possible due to the fraud on part of opposition and uh, they ordered the elections to be rerun, which happened in June. And now the Imam Oglu, uh, currently already a mayor, he won with nine percent of uh, margin with the with the actually uh, uh, Erdogan's very close partner in, uh, in, in former Prime Minister Yildirim. So this is. Just to give you a context, how uh, close, uh, was similarly close these uh, situations are in uh, Hungary and uh, um, uh, Turkey. In Turkey, uh, the main uh, outcome of the elections was uh, exactly as uh, Robert said in Hungary that basically the opposition strengthened itself, but, but at the same time Erdogan's power and the power of his party, uh, AKP, uh, Justice and Development Party, is still unmatched. So opposition feels emboldened after this result, but still lots, a lot of things have to be done. Because as we know that AKP is in power since 2002, and it never lost any elections, uh, except 2015 parliamentary elections, when Erdogan was uh, didn't get the majority for the first time. And 
uh, he again ordered to rerun the elections, called for the snap elections. He conducted a very successful operations against the Kurdish insurgency in the country. He used this rally under the flag effect in Turkey and basically won the elections in uh, autumn in 2015. So there are some similar strategies that uh, are obvious here. Uh, when Karachin went to Istanbul and he met with Imam Oglu, the, uh, the latter uh, um, advised him to use kind of uh, like embracing, uh, reconciliatory, inclusive approach because he believes that this is what brought him the victory in Istanbul. And uh, yeah, and Imam Oglu looks a very soft-spoken politician compared to this very uh, combative, conflictual uh, Erdogan's rhetoric. Uh, Erdogan himself uh, presented these local elections as a matter of national security. I mean, Turkey is, in, is a very specific country there where everything is uh, related to security. Every small issue is uh, depicted as a threat to national security. So threats are constructed on, uh, on uh, a very specific basis. So uh, Erdogan framed the whole local elections as uh, basically the referendum of confidence on his, on, on his uh, government. And uh, he said that uh, opposition was supported by the foreign media, that, uh, that terrorists support the opposition. He said that uh, there is uh, basically his archi enemy, uh, Gulen, a self exiled cleric in the uh, US, uh, who is uh, kind of um, fueling this deep st state in Turkey. So, clear, uh, I think, uh, parallels here with Hungary. And uh, basically, that the whole the, the opposition is uh, is uh, supported by uh, by treacherous uh, Western powers. Uh, even so, we know that uh, Turkey is part of the West too and part of NATO. But still, this discourse is very prevalent these day, days in Turkey. And uh, what was the like similar strategy for the opposition? Basically, that opposition set aside the differences. They said that, OK, we can challenge Erdogan only if we unite. And basically, uh, since uh, 2018, parliamentary elections, in, in these elections, they, what they did, they basically made, a, a electoral, uh, they made an alliance, political alliance, and uh, sometimes making, so, so making the um, appointing common candidates. And very significant player in Turkey are Kurds, Kurdish party. They didn't support openly the, many of those candidates, but they also did not appoint their own candidates, like giving the green light for the opposition, trying to, you know, to support them in this indirect way. Uh, and uh, basically, it, it's visible that it's worked. Uh, Erdogan's, Erdogan lost three major cities in, uh, in uh, Turkey, Ankara, Istanbul, and Izmir. And actually, Izmir already was uh, before controlled, not uh, by, 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 by the opposition, but Ankara and Istanbul were very painful. And Istanbul, it was like a sacral defeat for, for Erdogan. Erdogan was a mayor of Istanbul, and on numerous occasions he told that to lose Istanbul is to lose Turkey. But basically, we can say that it was also a not only Istanbul effect, but Ankara effect, because it was a capital, the same like, like Budapest or Warsaw, so the, the capital that is lost, and it's very like painful, of course, for the government that such holds such a strong grip on power to, to, to lose a capital. Uh, what is in future, just to make some kind of uh, summary. Of course, now the main question for Turkey, the same I believe as for Hungary, is the question whether this result can be replicated nationally in the next elections, whether uh, the lessons learned in these local elections can be somehow used uh, and Im employed. Many believe that this is the beginning of the end of Erdogan. Uh, and. Uh, so the image of his invincibility is broken. I believe the same as many experts say here relates to Fidesz uh, uh, in the same vein. So the, the, there are many unknowns now if the opposition uh, uh, manages to stay united. We don't know yet because uh, there are several strong personalities such as former Prime Minister Davut Oglu, former Deputy Prime Minister Babajan who said that they are going to create the parties to run for the next elections. That means that they will steal the votes from Erdogan for sure, 
they they are very like widely supported in Turkey. We don't know yet. I mean, there are no new polls did not yet include uh, the questions on support for these parties uh, uh, to to ask to to Turkish respondents. So we will see this fresh data soon, uh, and uh, of course. There is a very uh, solid, like very s uh, sp specifics of Turkey is that, uh, uh, unlike many other countries, uh, it can resort to military operation as it did in previous uh, years too, to to boost the the popularity for Erdogan. He did now; it, it's the second, uh, th sorry, third operation in Syria that uh, Turkey conducts now, and many say that the timing is obvious, that it's trying kind of to, to uh, strengthen the positions of uh, Erdogan at the uh, background of a serious economic crisis, unemployment, inflation, and many, this political, let's say, uh, in, uh, instability. Uh, I will stop here, and in case if something, uh, if I can answer some questions related to the topic, would we'll be glad. Thank you. Our Polish brothers or the shoulder ways. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for inviting me and having me here. So, um, a few years ago, when uh, the leader of Peace. Peace is a Polish acronym for the Law and Justice Party, uh, which I'll be using in this uh, short introduction. Uh, when the leader of Peace, Jarosław Kaczynski, came to Hungary and met again his very good friend, Viktor Orban, he enthusiastically declared, I hope that one day we will have Budapest and Warsaw. And by saying that, he didn't mean the towns, of course, but the, these two capital cities stood for the entire state. So after Mr. Karachoni won uh, the election in, in, in Budapest, many people on the left and also on the liberal democratic opposition said, yes, we do hope that we will have Budapest uh, in Warsaw soon. Although, strictly speaking, we have, sort of, we have had Budapest in Warsaw for the last year with Mr. Rafał Trzaskowski uh, being very much like Polish Karachoni, very liberal, dynamic, intelligent, and very much against against peace, uh, as we have in basically all major towns in Poland, which are either non-peace or strongly anti-peace, so that peace doesn't control any of the major towns and cities in Poland. But maybe in the discussion I'll come back to, this, uh, to these issues of importance of local politics, let me say a few words about the last election. So several points to be made about the outcome of the 13th October elections. First of all, absolutely no doubt, a historic victory for peace. Re-election, re-election with a hugely increased majority. Its majority increased by over two million compared to uh, 2015. Uh, with the vote share increased from 36 to 44 percent, uh, absolute majority in the parliament, although because of the increased turnout ex at exactly the same level, 235 seats out of uh, 460. Uh, so uh, they, they have run a very good campaign, professional, very well orchestrated, uh, well, in many respects, just run by consummate political experts and political specialists. But, there are, but they are disappointed by that victory uh, because they haven't achieved some of their purposes. First of all, they run well short of parliamentary, uh, sorry, constitutional majority. They cannot change the constitution. Not that it bothers them too much because uh, Jaroslav Kaczynski hasn't uh, been too much concerned about it. Uh, the, te the, the, the text and the unwritten norms of the constitution. Still, they, don't, they can't change the constitution. Uh, furthermore, they haven't even reached a lower qualified majority needed to overwrite presidential veto. It's not a practical problem for them these days when Andrzej Duda, their man, is president, but we'll have presidential elections in 2020, and if they lose this office, which is unlikely but possible, uh, then they will have a real problem because they won't be able to override the presidential veto. Uh, as you know, we in Poland we have a semi-presidential system, 
in contrast to Hungary, and the president may be a very, very meaningful veto agent. Uh, they also now face a much more difficult lower chamber, the parliament, the more important chamber. In Polish, it's same, S-E-J-M, uh, which is much more pluralistic than before, which again has the left. For the last term, we didn't have the left represented in, in the parliament at all. And in the left, we have some of the most formidable, not just politicians, but also local activists and intellectuals. They will be difficult for peace. And we have the extreme right, so-called confederation, uh, which for Kaczynski is a real problem because he doesn't feel comfortable having uh, another party to the right of him. It creates problems, for example, in his dealings with the church. To the church, he can be a gu guarantor of certain social conservatism with the confederation, which is, for example, much more, even more radical in anti-abortion proposals than Kaczynski's, it will be a problem. And finally, the main problem these days is that peace does not control the Senate, the higher chamber, where it has only 48 out of 100 seats. There are four independent judge, uh, sorry, senators, three of whom are clearly anti-peace. So, in fact, the situation in, in, in the Senate is that the opposition controls the Senate by the thinnest of possible margins, margins but it still does. And whether peace manages to buy at least one senator and make him or her to cross the floor, today is anyone's guess. So that's on the side of the, of the ruling party. On the side of the opposition, they got more vote share than peace, all three democratic, that is strongly anti-peace bloc, so I don't include Polish Jobbik or Confederation, but three liberal democratic blocs uh, got much more raw votes than, than peace. They got nine million while peace got eight million, and they've got 48% vote share compared to peace. So that, and yet they've, they've lost uh, in terms of, of seats in the parliament because of the method which has been adopted since the beginning. So it's no gerrymandering, no manipulation by peace. These are just the rules of game, the so-called don't system of converting votes into seats in the parliament. This system greatly favors, benefits strong coherent parties or strong coalitions. This time, the uh, liberal democratic opposition didn't run unified. And basically that tells you all, you know, they've got much more raw votes and they've lost uh, seats uh, in the parliament. Uh, out of three blocks, the largest one is the, is the platform, civic platform. Well, it's called civic coalition, but de facto is civic platform, by far the largest uh, part of, 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 the anti, uh, of this liberal democratic opposition. They ran horribly disorganized, chaotic, non-professional uh, campaign, and they are basically stagnant. Their intake in terms of votes is basically the same, marginally higher than in 2014. Two parties which contributed, or two blocks rather, because theoretically one of them ran as a coalition, another as a party. Uh, two blocks uh, on the liberal democratic side, which contributed much more votes to anti-peace, uh, is the agrarian party uh, and the left, composed of three parties, but running as a single party uh, in order to match the uh, threshold, which for coalitions is much higher than for single parties. So, of course, it's a disappointment uh, that they haven't managed to run as a single coalition. It is not obvious, it's nothing in politics is obvious, it's not obvious that if they ran as a single coalition, they would necessarily have won, because an argument can be made and has been made that by running in these three blocks, say, centrist liberals, agrarians, who are very, in many ways, conservative to moderate and the left, they actually managed to get higher turnout overall, so that the net turnout was higher than it would have been if they ran in a single election just before the 
European Parliament uh, in their single coalition because some of the more ideologically focused, especially left-wing voters, wouldn't simply uh, go to vote because they would be upset about the conservatives and the anti-peace. But these are, these are all speculations. This is, this, is, uh, this is second guessing about what would have been uh, in my view, and I was quite vocal in, uh, before the election that the anti-peace parties have to come to approach the elections uh, in a single block. Uh, unfortunately, it hasn't happened. So one lesson to the question Jolt before the meeting asked me uh, that one of the questions to, uh, to be raised is about the coordination uh, of the parties and how important it is. My answer is simple. It's extremely important. And it may well be that the lack of the coalition in Poland is responsible for the re-election re of peace to, the, to their second term of office. Now, their main problem now, and I will finish at, at that point, and we can move on to later, to other issues. Their main, pro their main problem for peace, for the ruling party now, apart from these issues which I mentioned and that is facing much more pluralistic parliament uh, facing the Senate, which may slow down legislation and which may make some nominations impossible, etc. Their main problem is the adoption of a sort of strategy in the run-up to the uh, presidential elections in, in mid-2020. It is clear that they have more or less exhausted the potential for the hard line voters. So if they want and they need to get more, to, to attract more voters to be confident in the presidential elections, they need to address moderate voters or hesitant voters or voters within this 40%, nearly 40% that simply abstained from voting in this election. On the other hand, a natural tendency of Kaczynski in the situations of challenge like this would be to go radical. And that is what many strate stra strategists and many propagandists on his side advise him to do. Uh, to make sure that he, quote unquote, completes all the reforms that is especially spreads full control over all judges in Poland before the presidential election because then after that, it, will, it, it may be too late. So this is a conundrum for him. You know, if he goes uh, moderate, uh, then he doesn't do many things which his hardline base wants him to do, and they are afraid that in the later part of the presidential term, it will be impossible because of presidential veto. If he goes very radical, then he will alienate the uh, potential wavering or hesitant or moderate voters. And, and probably he has reached certain glass ceiling uh, in terms of natural uh, supporters for peace. Okay, that's all for the, for the time being. Thank you.